Paramecium are common, one-celled organisms found frequently in ponds and scum water and often attracted to acidic conditions. Pellicle, the thin skin, film, or outer membrane. Cilia, the moving hair structures to move about and scoop food. Oral groove, this captures food to be passed to the mouth. Cell mouth, where captured food finally enters. Macronucleus, this is where normal cell functions take place. Micronucleus, responsible for cell division and genetic material collection during conjugation. Food vacuole, it's actually a storage space or pocket for food. Food vacuole forming, it's a storage space filling up with food. Food vacuole circulating is a food pocket that's actually circulating throughout the cell. Contractile vacuole, these contract to push unneeded water away from the cell. The cytoplasm consists of the ectoplasm, which is the cell's outer layer gel, and the endoplasm, which is the cell's inner fluid. Waste is expressed through an anal pore not shown in the diagram. This animation shows a cross section of the villa. The villa, however, are expressed over the entire surface of the organism, allowing it a locomotion speed of up to four times their length in a matter of a single second. Typically, a thickening agent is used when viewing paramecium under a microscope to slow speed down. However, the following videos are taken in their natural habitat with no altering agents. Some paramecium are larger than amoeba, while others are not, since some amoeba measuring 150 microns can easily engulf a smaller paramecium measuring only 100 microns. Paramecium populate in two different ways. The typical one is asexual self-splitting called fission. This is where the original cell pushes off its axis until there is a copy of itself and then pinches off that new copy. There is of course no difference in the cloned sister as far as genetic material is concerned. Sometimes, particularly when there's overcrowding, one cell will conjugate with another one for the purpose of mixing genetic material via their micronuclei. The two cells line up side by side and slowly fuse themselves together in order to affect the exchange of genetic material. Once the exchange and mixing has been completed, each rides off into their sunset, asexually dividing their now new structures at their own leisure. Paramecium come in many varying sizes, as is typical with many microorganisms. Probably the largest, and the one that's most commonly used in the classroom, and I will pronounce this slowly, is Paramecium multimicronucleatum. It is the largest, and it measures about 200 to 350 microns in length. The next largest is Paramecium caudatum, which measures 180 to 300 microns in length. Paramecium aureola measures from 120 to 180 microns in length. The smallest Paramecium are called Paramecium brucaria, and they appear green from Zuccarella. They measure from 100 to 150 microns long. These are often the easiest to see under a microscope because of their color green, even though they are the smallest of paramecium. They prefer lots of algae, which provides a suitable symbiotic relationship with the paramecium. The algae dines and grows vast on paramecium waste and in return give the gift of plenty of oxygen back to the organisms who then grow wholesome on the bacteria and continued growing algae and other smaller organisms in the vicinity. 
So far, we've been watching all of the paramecium except the green. We will see a sample of the little green guys, though, shortly. It is very important when you're watching and observing these little guys under a microscope, and particularly in their own environment, that you differentiate the paramecium from any other animals that are in the vicinity. As you can see here, there are some smaller animals uh, mixed in with the paramecium, but they swim very differently, and they don't look the same. It's actually fairly clear in this clip that there are other animals as well as the paramecium around this grand dinner site. While it is claimed that paramecium have none of our five senses, touch, sight, smell, taste, and hearing, I often rather doubt that, especially when I watch this little green guy who appears to have a little piece of uh, dust money attached to the rear end. Now he's going to go around in circles trying to get the thing off. He obviously knew that it was there and he doesn't want it there. You can see him going around and round, and he finally got rid of it. Now he's going to do something very interesting. He approaches, and I watched this guy for quite a while, this little debris down here, and it almost seems, in just a moment, that he grabs a hold of it, and he's going to actually pull this thing. If you watch very closely, He's going to go around, and then he's going to grab a hold of it. And he's very slowly going to try to lift this thing up. And he's fairly successful. So I'm wondering if he's doing this on purpose. It seems like he's doing it on purpose to me. Then he lets go and swims down and then just sort of hangs on to it. And of course here are a couple of more little green guys. You can see that they're much easier in a way to see, but you can also tell that they're a lot smaller than the other paramecium. I like them because they do sort of seem to glow. When I watch these little guys, especially in their own habitat, I wonder, is this how we started? Is this what our ancestors looked like? Is this the soup, the kind of soup that we started from? <laughs>